you certainly know the saying, once in a blue moon, Sky Fox capturing this stunning image last night of that rare blue super moon. For more on this amazing sight, we are joined by Vanessa Alarcon. She is Griffith Observatory's astronomical observer. You are uh, such an impressive young lady. Vanessa, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thank you so much, thank you for having me. Let's just start in the simplest terms, if you could, explain what is a blue super moon? Yeah, so there's two parts to the blue super moon. There's the blue part, and then there's the super moon part. Uh, the super moon part happens when the, uh, the phase of the moon aligns with uh, a certain part in its orbit where it's closest to Earth. So it's a full moon and it's at what we call perigee, which means it's closest point to uh, the Earth. So it appears very slightly bigger. So if you're in a very you know, astute viewer, you can actually tell the difference, but it's uh, you have to be watching the moon all the time and it's kind of difficult to do, but uh, the moon rises and it's impressive every single time. Uh, but let's get to the blue part. Uh, so the blue part is a little bit complicated because there's sort of two diff definitions floating around. Uh, one of them is sort of the original official definition, which is the third full moon um, in a season, an astronomical season, where there are four. Uh, so fancy way of saying is it doesn't happen every single time. Um, so this past moon was a, uh, a blue moon, so it was the third moon in an astronomical season in which there are four. Um, that part's not so important, but what you need to know is that uh, this last moon was it. But you can still watch it. You can still see it happening uh, for the, it's still big. It's still near, really close to a full moon uh, if you go out tonight and watch it. Okay, good, because we know that it did peak last night, uh, but tonight is another viewing opportunity. Uh, any words of wisdom for people who want to step outside and take a look? Just go out and observe it. Uh, so there's no right way to do it. You just look up in the sky and you find where the moon is. Uh, we have to wait for it to rise, uh, which will be a little bit later than it was yesterday. And it's technically not full anymore, but it's really close. So it'll still be a pretty big moon. And when we talk about uh, perigee, I think that's what you said. It's Doesn't it mm -hmm. appear about 14% bigger? Yeah, so around there, and that is compared to when it's at apogee, which is another thing, which would you would call like a micro moon, where it's uh, at, its, at its farthest point in its orbit when it aligns with a full moon. Uh, so that's a completely different phenomenon. Oh, not completely different. It's very similar sort of uh, idea, but uh, the opposite, basically. These pictures that we're showing, I saw those all online of you know various views of the moon all across the globe. Lastly, if people want to head to Griffith tonight to enjoy the site, can they do that? Uh, yeah, so you can actually you can come up to Griffith Observatory or you can watch it wherever you are. There's no real specific place. and uh, But at Griffith Observatory, you can have a sort of a, a sort of a marker to view what's called uh, the Major Lunar Standstill, which is a different event. If you're interested, you should check out the Griffith Observatory website to find out. The blue supermoon that is not blue, but still just as beautiful as ever. Vanessa Alarcon from Griffith Observatory and astronomer there. Thank you so much for uh, shedding some light on the blue supermoon tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me.